every once in a while you just need a great scrap buster project so i've got this great canvas tote that we're going to embellish with a scrappy monogram can't wait to show you how to do it This project is super simple. I picked up some of these blank canvas totes that we carry here at Missouri Star. And then you're also going to need this 10 inch embroidery hoop. I had some of this cotton rope left from making the zigzag rope bowls. So if you have some of this in your stash, be sure to grab it because it adds a fun detail. Pick out your favorite embroidery floss. And then also I use this for Bina Charm Pack by Jen Hewitt for Ruby Star, but if you have some scraps lying around, it would be perfect for this. So let me show you how to make this. So I just opened up my charm pack and I wanted this to be scrappy. And so I used the scrappy 16 patch method from Jenny's tutorials. And if you're not familiar with that, it's really easy. You're just gonna pair up contrasting colors, right sides together. And we're gonna sew just the two opposite sides with a quarter inch seam and then we can cut these in half like so and then when we open it up it gives us these kind of bar blocks that we can set together i've got two here we can just put these right sides together and then we'll sew on these two opposite sides intersecting that seam and that gives us a four patch let me show you here i have a few done just like so. And so it comes together really fast. You'll just put four of those four patches together to make this scrappy 16 block. And this is what I use for the basis of my monogram. So then you're going to want to print off your letter from the alphabet that we've linked and just make sure if you need to reverse your letter that you've done that. And so the M is right either way, but if you're using a J or a G, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have that reversed. And so I've gone ahead and traced this onto my Sew Light fusible. And now we are going to take this over to the iron and I'm gonna press this to the wrong side of my scrappy 16 block. So let's go ahead and come over here. This is a great chance to just make sure it's laying as smooth as possible, even from the back side. So I'm just going to make sure my seams are all kind of laying flat before I press this in place. We'll flip it over one more time just to make sure everything is nice and smooth. A little prep work goes a long way. And so now we can just center this fusible on here. That looks good. And we're just gonna press this in place with a nice hot dry iron. Beautiful. All right, and so now I found this easiest to cut with scissors. You can also just use your ruler and your rotary cutter if you have nice straight edges, which I do for my letter. So we can just trim these off to get started and save us a little bit of time. There we go. Just like so. Then I'll come back and get these points with my scissors. You do want to be mindful because there are some thicker spots where those seams are coming together underneath the fusible. So just be careful when you're cutting through those. And we'll cut these as well. we go all right so now we can flip that over that looks great and you can see how fun this is that we've got this sort of patchwork coming through our monogram so now let's grab our tote bag and we're gonna bring it and our letter over to the ironing board 
So once we have that nice and flat, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the paper backing off of my fusible. So let's go ahead and do that. Make sure I can get a hold of it here. There we go. I'm just gonna leave that adhesive behind. There we go. All right, and so now I'm just gonna kind of eyeball and make sure this is centered between my handles and about even here. I think that looks pretty good. And so once you're happy with the placement, you're just gonna use that iron nice and hot, press it straight down. Just make sure all of the edges have fused. You wanna really take your time and make sure. Okay, I think that looks great. All right, let's bring this over here. I am gonna go ahead and clear this out and I'm gonna put this in the hoop and I'll meet you back here. All right, so I have placed my monogram within this hoop and I have that ready to go. You can see it fits nicely within this 10 inch hoop. I also chose this gold embroidery floss. I use the presentia that comes on a spool like this and I have just doubled it up. And so it's just a comfortable length. You don't need to worry about having enough thread to do all of this. We're gonna be able to re-thread and work as we go. And so then to knot this, let me show you how I do it. It's really simple. I have both of the threads together. I'm going to loop it once around my hand so that they cross each other. And then I'm gonna roll those together towards the tip of my finger and slide that down. And that gives me a knot here at the end of my thread. And so that's what I do every time. It works pretty seamlessly. If you want to trim up the tails a little bit, you can, so you have less hanging behind, just like so. And then to begin, I also just keep the spool handy here, and I'm just gonna spool off as much as I need. If that's cumbersome for you, I found it was just a little bit less than six feet that I needed to cut off for this particular letter. It'll depend on which letter you choose, how much rope you need. So just keep that in mind. But let's go ahead. The first thing we're gonna do is just tack the rope in place. And so I'm gonna go ahead and poke my needle from behind, right along the edge of my fabric here. And then we're just gonna lay the rope just like so. And this part is kind of the, the trickiest to get going because you just need to hold the rope in place. And so I want to line up the outer edge of the rope with that first stitch so that it's coming in on top of the fabric. And then I can just take a little stitch here and pull this through. And so you can see my, my string has kind of popped out of the rope, but that's okay. And then we're just gonna tug that until it's in place. And so then now you can go every two or three inches, but the most critical places are your corners. So let's go ahead and just put another little tack a few more inches up here. So we're gonna come up right on the outside edge of that fabric, pull this through and come right down on the other side. And the whole first step is to just go around and tack this into place. And so you're just gonna pull that tight. Now I'm gonna come up to the corner. There we go, there's that corner. And I'm gonna come in just a little ways so that I can make that turn and pull tight. And then I can pivot my rope and continue all the way around. And so let's go ahead and look at the finished bag so you can kind of see um, each of the points where we tacked it. Here's where we've started. We've tacked it here and then just a few inches. And then at the corners is really the most important. So if you just put a few in there as you work your way all the way around 
And then when you get to where you started, you're just gonna cut your rope and just wrap those two ends together and they just disappear. You can't even see where the start and stop of my rope is. So let's go ahead now and talk about that embroidery stitch. All right, so we've pulled tight here and now we're gonna pivot and I'm gonna go ahead and come to this other corner. And you do wanna make sure that you have the handles out of the way. I've learned the hard way that it's easy to get those caught in our thread. And so we're, I just have them up here in my hand so I'm not fighting with them. And then we'll just pull through here. And then we're gonna pivot this down again. I'm just gonna put one more tack and then I'm actually gonna go ahead and clip this just because I wanna be able to move on to the next step. But you're just gonna continue in this way all the way around your letter. So let's do one more here. And just like so. So now that I've pulled this tight, I'm gonna flip this over. Hopefully you guys can see in here where I'm working. And we are gonna knot this off. I like to go ahead and do that twice. So I go under that string from our tacking and then pull that tight. And so then we can just clip these threads just like so. I'm gonna go ahead and knot it again and then we can start on that embroidery stitch. Okay, so now I've just trimmed this short. Like I said, I'm gonna show you the stitch that I chose to finish this off. And so much in the same way we did the tacking, we're just gonna come up right along the outside edge of our fabric. And then I wanna be sure to bring you guys in close so you can see step-by-step step how I did this. So let's go ahead and pull this thread up and then get in close here and I'll show you what comes next. All right, so I wanna go directly across from that stitch that I first took, and we're gonna go straight down and just pull this tight. I've doubled up the thread because I figured out that that gives us more coverage as we're working our way across this. And so now, instead of wrapping all the way around this, I'm actually gonna come up from the inside now, right next to that first stitch that I took. Just wanna make sure it's really close. There we go. And now I'm gonna go back the other way, right in line with the outside edge of that fabric and pull it through. And I found this way saves a lot of thread because we're just gonna see the bulk of the thread on the top of our rope. So we're just gonna work our way back and forth here, one after the other, just like that. And this was the perfect project to curl up and watch a movie with the kids and just stitch while we were spending some time together. And it was just really satisfying to see this start to take shape. And so we'll come right back up again. And this method is gonna completely enclose that raw edge of our fabric so we won't have to worry about that fraying. It will give us this beautiful embroidered finish. Sometimes you have to kind of angle your needle around the rope. Just like so. You can see how lovely that looks and we're just gonna continue all the way around. This is a great slow stitching project for you to just spend some time doing something that you enjoy. And remember with embroidery, the important part is that the pretty side is on the outside, so don't worry too much about what it looks like inside your tote bag. This is a great project for us to learn on. It just gives this beautiful kind of three-dimensional finish to this scrappy project. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on the scrappy monogram tote. I'll see you next time on at home. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching at home. We're so excited to be almost a million quilters strong here at Missouri Star. And so if you haven't already joined our family, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can be notified of all of our future tutorials. And we'll see you soon.